Now that we have our style sheet linked, we can go ahead and start styling some of the elements. Now by default, a browser adds a certain amount of padding and margin to the edges of the browser window. We want to get rid of that, and in order to do that we do what's called zeroing out the body. And what we do is we, we manipulate the body directly. So we have our style sheet linked now so we can go ahead and create our first rule. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to give it just a body uh, affect the body tag directly. So the first parameter we're going to give it is margins. So we want to give it a margin zero and a padding zero. So that's our margins and our padding set. The next thing we want to do is we want to give it a font size. Now the font size, as I said, we're, we're affecting the body directly here. So rules that we put in here affect the entire body, everything that's contained within it. So we can affect the font size of the entire website from here. So what I want to do is I want to give it a font size, but I want to give it a, I'm not going to give it an actual pixel, pixel font size. Uh, sorry, it's not font family, it's font size. So now I don't want to give it a pixel font size as I said already. I want to give this an actual percentage of font size and because we want this to be responsive. So the, the percentage that I'm giving it is 87.5%. The next parameter that I want to give it is an actual font family. The font family I want to give it is, I want Arial, but I don't want the other two. So we select that first one and what we do is we take out the other two. Now the font family that I want to have it here in place of those two is Lucinda Sans Unicode. That's the name of the font I want. Now that's a special font. So what I want to do is I want to add it in. Now in order to add it in we put in our double our single quotes. And it's Lucinda with a capital uh all the Lucinda is and you see I N D A. Uh so it's Lucinda Sans Unicode. And that's our font family set. So we'll save that. There's no point in looking at it in the browser now because it's not going to show up anything because at this point the margins are zeroed out, the padding is zeroed out, but we don't have any actual fonts. We'd have no text on the website to view, so there's no point in viewing it. So what we do now is we'll go ahead and we'll style our body tag. Now this body tag I want to give, we've already styled our body tag, but I want to give this a class so that we can give it a second styling. So the class that I'm going to give this is uh, a class class of wrapper. And we can style bring the styling of this just a little bit further on. So now that we've given it that class, we can go in and create the rule for that class. So we do that to style a class, you precede the class name with a period. So we have our class of wrapper, and again we have our opening and our closing tags. So the first thing we want to do with the wrapper is we want to give it a background color. And I have a particular color in mind for it, and it's a grey. And it's hashtag C5, C5, C5. And it's, as you've seen there, it was a grey. The next thing I want to do then is I want to give it a background image. Now you're probably wondering why I'm giving it a background image. Um, when I've given it a background color. The background color is a fallback for some reason if the image isn't able to be displayed. So there's, uh, we're just going to give it a background property and we want to give it a URL. So we're going to link to the image. Now the eagle eye people there will notice that I have no images done for this yet. What we'll do is we'll put them in afterwards but I'm going to type in the link to it. Our image is going to be, com is going to be located in our images folder. So we'll go ahead and we'll create the link to it. Now this is slightly different than creating the link that we made for the CSS. We actually have to give this a URL property or a link. So it's URL and then you have your opening and your closing uh, brackets. We may as well give it a colon. So inside of these brackets we give it the link. Now the images folder is created in our root folder. So it's it's actually it's we have to go up a folder to get to the image folder. So how we do that is we go dot dot period. So that takes us out of the CSS folder where the CSS file is located and we want to go into the images folder which is underscore images. And I know the name of the folder or the name of the image is body underscore bg dot jpg and it's a jpeg file. So it's body underscore 
SVG dot JPEG. Uh, now the next thing I want to do is I want to give it a background attachment. And you're probably wondering what I'm doing that for. What I'm doing that for is I want the image background image to stay fixed when I scroll because if you have an image heavy website it's slower to load if you have a fixed background that doesn't scroll uh, it's less intensive so what I'm doing is I'm going to give it a fixed property so that it stays static behind uh, and doesn't go anywhere so the next property that I'm going to give it after that is I'm going to give it margin the, I'm going to give the wrapper a margin left and a margin right of auto and you're probably wondering why I'm giving it a margin right and a margin left and a margin right of auto. What that does is that centers the wrapper in the browser. But at this point now, it's just going. To, it's not going to do anything because there's no actual width to it. So it's going to be the full width of the browser window. So what we have to do now is we have to give it a width parameter. Now, for this width parameter, I'm not going to give it a pixel width. If I give it a pixel width, it means that it's going to be a set width, and it means it won't be responsive. So what we want to do here is we want to give it a percentage width, which means it's going to be a certain percentage of the entire browser window. So what we want to do is we want to make it 60% of the entire browser window. So if we save that, we'll go back to our index.php page. We'll save that as well. Now, what I want to do here is I want to put our image into our folder. As I said already, we didn't have that image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I have it in another folder here. I'm going to copy it and put it into our root folder. And as you can see that Dreamweaver has this horrible habit of creating notes folders for some reason. So I'm just going to delete that. So we can paste our image in there as you see as body BG. So what we can do now is refresh the file pane over here and you can see that our body BG shows up in our image folder. So what we want to do now is we might as well put up the entire site. In order to put up the entire site you select the folder, the top level folder and just with the blue arrow put it up. Push the blue arrow and then select OK to put the entire site up. And once that's done, what we'll do is we go back to the browser and we click refresh and we have a nice grey background.